In this video, we'll look at the principal and interest of amortized loans. Now, we talked about before that amortized loan is a loan in which we're repaying in regular equal payments. But it is important to understand that just because the payments are equal, the principal and interest within the, the payment is different. Early on in the payment, you're going to be paying mostly towards the interest of the loan, whereas near the end, you're paying mostly towards the principal. Now, that sounds like maybe banks and loaning uh, companies are actually maybe taking us to town and taking our money, but that's not necessarily really the case. So let's look at why this would be what is happening. Let's go back to an example we used when we were calculating the monthly payment of a mortgage, and that was with Freddie's home purchase. In that example, we said that Freddie took out a loan for $195,000 for 30 years with an annual interest of 4.25%. Now, we calculated previously that that was a $959.29 monthly payment. But now we want to know what's really happening with the principal and interest in each of these cases. So we have all that information that can be helpful with us in understanding. So first, we think about, well, how much do we actually pay in interest each month? Let's start at the beginning, in month one. So in month one, if we want to know how much interest, we start with our loan and multiply by, well, what's the monthly interest rate? We know our annual interest, so to do our monthly interest, we would just divide by 12. We know the original loan amount because it was provided. So if I divide four and a quarter percent as its decimal form by 12 and then multiply by 195,000, that will tell me how much interest is paid in that first month. And that's a lot of what the monthly payment is. So that means the remaining amount of that monthly payment has to be towards the principal. So that means I'm going to take my monthly payment subtract out my interest, and that tells me how much goes towards the principal of the loan. So I subtract those two numbers. So only $268.66 goes towards that monthly payment. And that's not because the company's trying to cheat you out of your money. It's because the loan is based on how much interest you have to pay each month. And you're paying interest on a huge amount of money to start off with. But that's gonna slowly whittle away because what we do then is we say at the end of the month, we're going to subtract away that principal from the original loan, and that's what's remaining to pay off. So now the amount that I'm going to get interest on is going to shrink. So as the amount that I pay of the loan that's left shrinks, so does the interest. Thus, more gets paid towards the principal. So what happens in month two? That would be maybe the next question to ask. So here I've made a table just with that information that I just calculated. The monthly payment's never changing, but our principal and interest will, which means the loan amount will change as well. So in month two, the difference is that loan amount has shrunk just a little bit. So now when I'm figuring out the monthly interest, it's using that new loan amount right here. So now I'm gonna multiply that, those two values together, and you can see the interest just got a little bit smaller this next month, which means that if I'm looking at my overall payment and remove the interest, a little bit more goes towards the principal. That means that I now am gonna remove a little bit more from my loan. So I'm gonna take my loan amount that I had left, subtract my new amount of principal, and that tells me now I'm down just a little bit. And I keep doing this process over and over again. It's an iterative process. It's a recursive process. And what that means by saying it's recursive is that to calculate month three, I needed month two. And to calculate month two, I needed month one. So I always need, starting at month one, all the information to move from one month to the next. And if I keep going, you can see the principal slowly increases by about a dollar a month and the interest is decreasing by about a dollar a month. But as my principal increases, my loan gets smaller and smaller each time. So when we're calculating the principal and interest of an amortized loan, it's important to recognize, again, that this is a recursive process. So there's not just one formula that is going to tell you to calculate, hey, what's month uh, 212 of this 30-year loan? It won't do that. It's a process. So I have to start at month one. So I need to first know what was the original amount of the loan. 
That's why I have amount at month zero. So that's what M0 means. I need to know my monthly payment. And if that hasn't been calculated, I need to calculate that. And if you're unsure how to do that, check out the previous video with annuities and, and calculating monthly payments. Now for month one's principal and interest, I always calculate the interest first. So the interest of month one will be equal to that original loan times my monthly interest. So that's the annual interest rate divided by, in this case, almost always 12 because we're doing monthly payments on a loan. Once we have an interest, we can subtract that from our monthly payment to know how much of our principal is paid off in month one. Now, what's left in the loan for month one is gonna be taking my original loan amount and subtracting how much was paid towards the principal in that first month. And then that will lead us to month two. Now in month two, again, I start with the monthly interest, but the difference is that the amount of the loan has now changed. And I use that to calculate the interest, which means that my principal is gonna change based on the new interest, which means my new loan amount is gonna be dependent upon that new principal being removed from month one's remaining loan. So that's why it's a process and not just a single formula. I gotta go piece by piece, month by month to do this. Often I honestly use something like Excel or Google Sheets to help me with this because it is a process that I can just put into the sheet and program to help me. But let's go through this and continue to calculate each month uh, for a new example. Say in this case we have Jackie who purchased a home for $300,000 with a loan that was a 20 year loan instead of the normal 30 and an interest rate of 5%. Now you could calculate the monthly payment, but it is provided here as $1,979 and 87 cents. And we know, well, what's those first months, the principal and interest. So we start with our interest. We do the original amount times our monthly interest rate. In this case, we take our annual and divide by 12. Then we multiply that by the 300,000 because that's the interest we have to pay on. So of that original payment, $1,250 will go towards interest, which means the rest of that payment will be towards the principal. So I subtract my interest from my monthly payment. So now I'm paying $729.87 towards the loan. So at the end of month one, my loan will be my original amount minus what I just paid towards the principal. So I subtract them. I have it, now have $299,000 or $299,270.13. Now I use that information and I've put it here in a table and I can go to month two. So the interest in month two will use my new loan amount times my monthly interest. So because this is a little bit smaller, my interest that month is just a little smaller too, which means my principal the next month that I'm paying towards is going to be a little bit bigger. So I can subtract out the interest and see that, yeah, it grew by about $4. That means that my overall loan, when I subtract from what I currently have minus this new payment towards the principal, it's going to shrink as well just like before. So I could continue this process for month three, month four, and continue on for all, in this case, 240 months if I want. And here's the first 12 months completed for you, so you can see. Now, like I said, to do it by hand becomes a process, and it becomes a long process, which is why much of this is done actually using a calculator and a program. So let's look at a way we could do this using Google Sheets. All right, so here I have a basic chart that I've created, starting with the month, the payment, the principal, the interest, and the remaining loan. And here's that information about Jackie's loan to start off with. So I'm gonna do a, a unique thing here. I'm gonna put month zero. That's because I want to have a cell that has the $300,000 in it. Then I'm gonna list month one. And in month one, 
I know that my monthly payment is never going to change as the $1,979.87. Now, I think about what do I calculate here? My monthly interest, I calculate. So if I'm calculating something, I want to use the equal symbol. And I know that it is the remaining loan, which is why I wanted month zero there, times, well, it's my annual interest rate. I can use parentheses, which was the 500s divided by 12. And I can close that parentheses. And you can see it even gives me the two decimal places because I've done that. Now for my monthly principal, I'm calculating that. So I know it is my monthly payment, so I click on the cell, I use the minus sign, and then I click on the monthly interest cell and push enter. And it gives me that value. Now I need my remaining loan. I know that for my remaining loan, I'm calculating, so I do equals. I click on the previous month and then I subtract out what is my principal. And there it has the exact same value we found by hand. Now here's what's great. If I highlight that entire row of cells, so that's what, five cells? You see that little blue box at the bottom? Watch what happens as I drag it and then I release. So I'm gonna just drag it the whole length here uh, to the first 36 cells. Now. I made one mistake here in that it didn't have the, the month numbers. If that happens, what you can do is if uh, you can highlight those first couple cells and then drag them down to match up. But that's not a big deal. So there I fixed it. The monthly payment never changed. But now I can see that growing in principle, the decreasing interest, and how my remaining loan actually gets affected and I'm not having to do all those calculations on my calculator. So I can just use the program to help me do that and make it a little bit easier.